Now, these public comments, anybody that's here public? Well, there's nobody here public. Are you public? Okay. No, it's not roll call. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I missed it. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Sprecher? Here. Mr. Rosinski? Ms. Ryan? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Here. Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Here. Ms. Kaplan, Ms. Hallett. Okay. Okay. What I was saying is for every applicant, you're going to have pu uh, public comments. So if you're here for that to go with an applicant, then you can talk then. Okay, so right now I've got to say, is there any public comments? Hearing none, continue. Uh, Pam, we brief on a quasi-judicial? I'll read the quasi-judicial announcement and the ex parte disclosures and swearing in of speakers. Um, this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the board acts as a quasi-judicial rather than legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances. In order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it, the board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, evi and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. At this time, I ask the board if you have any ex parte communication related to any of the applications before us tonight. No. All of those who would like to speak at tonight's meeting, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, so sworn. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll go on to our first application. That is 2329-103 uh, South Spring Street. Uh, you have some uh, staff? She'll be right back. Okay. You're not here. Okay, we're gonna have to wait one second. Did you ask uh, not yet. Uh, staff is gonna give their report, and then you then it's, then you'll be able to come up and uh, give your okay. you no know, your report. Okay. We can approve the minutes from last month. Hmm? It says approval of March minutes. Do we have to do that? Yep. Could you talk into your microphone, yeah. please, Michelle? While we're waiting, let's approve the March minutes. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, do I hear a motion to? I move that we approve the March 6th minutes as presented. I second. second. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a roll call vote? Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. That's out of the way. It'll just be a second, I believe.
I'm still working on too, here, so but. it's not my first time. This is the first time this has ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> We're just Where yours is so organized. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've gone through meetings in 10 minutes. On the first application. Okay. Evening. Uh, sorry for the delays. Caroline Lanford, Principal Planner, City of Turpin Springs Planning and Zoning Department. Um, presenting um, application 2329 uh, at 103 South Spring Boulevard. Uh, this map shows the location of the structure. Uh, this map shows the location of the subject's property uh, within the city's uh, national and local historic district. Um, this just gives you the zoning context for the subject property and the surrounding area. Um, and here's just a, a survey of the subject property. So the applicant is uh, seeking a certificate of approval to install solar panels on the east and west elevations of the circa 1920 structure at the subject property. Um, the Florida master site file for the property notes that it has been previously altered in 2005, but despite these alterations, uh, the structure retains enough historic integrity to be considered a contributing structure in the local historic district. This uh, shows the 19 and 1926 Sanborn maps. You can see in the 1919 map on the left, it is not there. And then it appears in the 1926 map. Uh, this is just an overlay of the um, site. So on, on the left, you have the aerial of how it is today. And the middle there, it shows up in uh, 1926 Sanborn map and then kind of a transparent overlay to show you what part of the structure is original. Uh, this is the picture from the Florida Master Site File. And this is what the subject property looks like today. Um, a view from the southwest. Uh, the west side where uh, some of the proposed action is to take place. Uh, this is a further view of the west side. You can see um, the subject property is located uh, right next to the Knapp House. Similar context on the west side, there's the Knapp House. Uh, and this is showing the east side of the subject structure where uh, the majority of the proposed solar panels would be placed. Uh, and this shows uh, some of the vegetation on the east side, showing you some context uh, for the east side. And you can still see the Knapp House over here from Banana. Um, this is uh, from a postcard. Um, didn't get an exact date from it, but you could uh, see the, the structures there on the left, and then I've enlarged it down at the bottom. So that's what it looked like when it was originally built, closer to it. And you can see um, there's still some of that, that, that historic uh, character there. Um, so this uh, slide shows the proposed project. Um, the majority of the solar panels are proposed to be on the east or Banana Street side of the street, but um, they are proposing some panels on the west elevation 
that would be visible from Spring Boulevard as well. And there's just some drawings of the proposed um, product that would be used. Okay, and for our standards of review, um, we have neighborhood and district context, the roof straight shape and texture, architectural features, adherence to the secretary's guidelines, and conformance with other city code requirements. Um, so as I'll discuss, the proposed project does present some inconsistency with the review criteria. However, um, there were key factors that I used in the analysis. Well, one is that the project is reversible and no historic materials would be destroyed. Solar panels are a contemporary building material that's going to inherently be inconsistent with a historic uh, character. And uh, lastly, that um, we need to balance the um, goals, objectives, and policies of the historic preservation element of the, conserva uh, of the comprehensive plan with the city's sustainability initiatives. So those are some overarching thoughts I had as I was doing the analysis. <coughs> So also we have to take in consideration adherence to the secretary's guidelines. And again, um, on the one hand, it, it will change the historic character of the property and the streetscape. But on the other hand, um, no historic materials will be destroyed. And it is a reversible action. Uh, so the design review guideline manual does have a section um, strictly for solar panels. Um, and it states that solar, solar, I'll say that 10 times real fast, solar shingles are a good alternative for historic structures, um, and it does not appear that this alternative uh, was evaluated. Um, particularly, it also notes that, you know, panels should be installed where they're less visible from the street, but the location of this structure on the corner of two streets makes that um, kind of difficult. So on the other hand, um, you know, uh, our guidelines tell us that we should encourage uh, reducing energy. Um, and also that, you know, modern equipment should not illuminate or cover up significant architectural features. Now, the question is, um, roofs are a, a, an important architectural feature of a building, um, but the, the roof would be retained underneath the solar panels, uh, the one that they have now. It's obviously not an original material. Um, so staff is preliminarily um, recommending approval for the application uh, with the following conditions, um, that an alternative panel configuration be explored to reduce the visual impact to the streetscape. Uh, I had talked to the applicants previously and they have looked at a couple of different alternative configurations uh, and that I would request that, that if they come up with an alternative that is less impactful that that be allowed to be approved at the staff level. Uh, and then that the certificate of approval would expire in three years if a building permit has not been issued for the project. So as always, uh, the project was publicly noticed. We had a one phone call, one in-person visit, and an email. The email uh, you should have gotten eventually was in support of the project, and uh, the phone call and in-person visit were asking questions and had some concerns about the impact to the historic character of the streetscape. And with that, I'm going to submit this as my testimony for the city of Tarpon Springs. Okay, Carolyn, thank you very much. Uh, the applicant. Now, uh, no, right, here. Right, right over there. Right there, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, uh, are you with uh, Spring Street? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood something a while back. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. No, I am uh, John Patrick Callen. This is Ellie Wolf Mulek. Okay, I got you now. Okay. Um, I'll be brief here at, at, at the beginning. Um, we both have 
Ellie more than I, long history in Tarpon Springs. We moved together from her prior home at 303 Grand, which I think <coughs> is also in the historic district. Um, we purchased the uh, property in question one, three years ago yesterday. Um, we have made some improvements with, within the character of the home. We, we love that it looks kind of historic and kind of a bungalow thing. We love our home. Uh, one of the things we did early on was to repaint the exterior, and we kept colors consistent. If it was the exact, I don't know, but it was definitely consistent with the way it looked bef when we purchased it. Not like that 1921 picture or whatever the year was, because that was a much smaller and wh white paint and a whole lot different than when we purchased it. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we replaced the rusted front gate. If, you, if you're familiar with our property, we have these uh, wrought iron atop of a concrete structure around much of the house. And the gate was not good. It was failing. There were other places around the property where the where the wrought iron, and it was wrought iron, was rusty. We replaced that with aluminum, but that looked, maintained the same appearance. In addition to that, we have added, for our safety and the safety of others, some railings up the front steps and in the back, um, and they are in the same character, the same black aluminum to look like wrought iron. We also, the, you may have noticed that a lot of people don't know we have a pool. It's kind of hidden by that wall. But our pool equipment is on the south side of the house, and we put up some more railing and added passion vine that has taken over very quickly, and you don't see the pool equipment anymore. So that's kind of a nice aesthetic thing. And then I, we feel that we, in general, we've been good stewards of the home and maintaining the structure and grounds. So onto the project itself. We interviewed four different firms before choosing ADT Solar, who is our contractor. Uh, all firms proposed just about the same number of panels, anywhere from 39 to 42 panels. In general, they, they range producing 400 kilowatt hours per panel, and ADTs are 395, but uh, it's, in, it's all in the same ballpark. Um, we, one of the reasons we chose ADT was that they have the, there are, and I'm not technical about this stuff, but uh, they have inverters that are necessary for solar panels uh, to uh, in some way get the power delivered to Duke. Uh, and the inverters are all within each panel, and they'll be mounted under the panel. So that's less hardware visible because of those. The design that is in your report and that we submitted to the city is was chosen as the optimum power generation, uh, and that is our preference. Our motivation to go solar is, like many people, is, it's twofold. One, and you know, we're a little bit environmentalist in our nature, and we, we would like to in, do sustainability initiatives. Um, and then, in the long run, we also want to, we're concerned about the rising cost of electricity, as I imagine all of us are. And in that regard, one of the paper that I had passed out to you before we started is a little spreadsheet. Pardon me, I am a retired CPA. I do Excel. <laughs> and the, uh, what I had in terms of, we, you know, like many people, we have a file where we put our electric bills. Uh, that, that went back to December of 21. So I chose the last five months ending April of 23 and the five months ending April of 22. And you see that the top half is the amount of our bill and the number of kilowatt hours used in that month. And then that's, that's added together. That's where you get $2,299.12 and 9,338 kilowatt hours for a cost per kilowatt hour of 20, 0.2462 or 24.62 cents. Um, then the same five months the prior year, we spent $1,810.11 with 8,984 kilowatt hours used. I think to the extent that there's a difference there, it's because of the really two cold snaps we had this year. Mm -hmm. um, that cost per kilowatt hour was 0.2015. That difference in the black, that, that 
that shaded black is because I couldn't figure something out in Excel, uh, is 0.0447. Well, that's a really small number, but as a percentage, it is 22.2% higher per kilowatt hour for those five months this year versus the same period last year. When we were deciding whether to go solar, I did, again, a spreadsheet. I made different assumptions. One of the things I had assumed was a 5% per year increase in, in electricity costs from Duke Energy. Not right now, much higher. And when I did that 5% spreadsheet, we were going to have, we were gonna be totally paid back in the range of 14 to 16 years. If this continues, we'd be paid back in six to seven years. Uh, and, and from then on, just generating basically free electricity. There is a small element to the Duke Electric bill that's kind of like an administrative charge, 20 or $30. That probably goes on unless we develop a credit because we have excess usage. Um, so that is kind of remarkable and a reason, more reason for us to do it. And with that, we don't have a representative from our contractor with us tonight. We can put him on the speakerphone if it would, if, if you ask me questions I can't answer, and, and maybe he can. Okay. With that, I thank you for your attention and for your service to the city and this board. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have a, have anything else to say? I have some questions okay. for staff. Okay, Over to staff? Staff. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. We'll get Carolyn, how many homes in the district have solar panels on them? I do not have that off the top of my head. Do you know that any of them do? I don't know that I've seen them. I don't know that any, I don't know. There I, is, I, I don't want to speculate. But I'm in Greek town. There I'm is one. Sure. There is one that I know of. There's one, two, three doors down from them that has it on banana. Yeah, on banana. It's on banana? banana. Okay. On yeah, banana. but it's a smaller house back from the, house, back from the road, and it was... Uh, it was last year. In a yeah, it was in a position where all the panels could be on the back of the house. On the back, yeah. So there was nothing in the front. There's another house on in Grand. There's one on Grand, too. There's one on Grand that was right next to the house I used to own. It's on the corner. And that's in the materials that Sterling put earlier as an example. Um, excuse me, if you're going to speak, we need you to be up at the microphone yeah. so it can be on the record. And my other question is on this alternative that you show. Did you just show solar panels that look like a roof? Yes, um, and that is what the our design review guidelines per, would have as a preference. They're called solar shingles. Um, they look like a roof. They act like a roof, um, and they're they're uh, very appropriate aesthetically. However, they're not as readily available of a product as uh, solar panels are. So I can understand if um, that alternative wasn't feasible for them. Okay. I just have a problem with putting solar panels in the historic district, but I guess if there's other houses there, there's a precedent. There is, and I, th I think that the key things to remember on, on this particular proposed action is that they are a corner lot. There's really no place they can put them where it's less visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions? To staff or okay, any public opinions? None. There's a gentleman standing up. Oh, did you want to say anything about this? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm My sorry. My name is Kenneth J. Kicked. I live at 211 South Spring Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I live five houses from this location. I live in a home that's 120 years old. Um, it seems to me like that this, the application here was more about solar, solar and what we're saving and all of that. I thought this board and, and had to do with the aesthetics of the, the uh, historic district. Mm -hmm. It's got, I, I don't see how the solar even comes into play here. It says either if you can see, you should not be able to see 
solar panels from the road or right away. You drive down Tarpon Avenue and look left and you'll see the solar panels. You go on South Spring, you'll see the solar panels. You go on Banana, you'll see the solar panels. Come down Court Street, you're gonna see the solar panels. Now that's four different ways. Now I ride around and I'm seeing solar panels on certain houses. Now you're seeing them on one road, not four ways. So I, I don't see how how we can approve this application. I'm sorry to you know, have to disagree, but are we gonna have a, a historic district or not? And that's what the question is here. And I, I'm seeing too many. I, I, I didn't oppose any of the others. I saw them, but I didn't oppose them. And, but then I want to see what's happening. Now I see they get approved, and we're going to end up with solar panels all over the historic district. Now what is that going to look like? Do we really want a solar district, if, I mean a historic district? If we do, then let's protect it. You, you can't be both ways. You can't be for the historic district and, and, and be a, uh, you know, someone that's for the global warming and being activist. You can't be both, one or the other, and that's your choice. And there's a lot of people that are opposed to this, but they don't want to get involved. They don't want to come out. So anyway. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. There is one of your areas of approval would be if they, sorry, you looked for an alternative configuration, which I assume is that roof. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, they can look for alternatives. That, that is something I would suggest if the board determines to uh, to, to approve the, the proposed project. With that because caveat. If you're gonna make a comment, sir, you please stand up and speak into the microphone. Yeah. One more comment. <laughs> there are things that are coming down the pike if we'll be patient. There's uh, fuel cells, I don't know if you heard about it. They're building a hydrogen plant over in Polk County. And we're gonna have hydrogen in the area and fuel cells within the next five years, you're gonna have fuel cells, which will sit beside your house and be more efficient and, and less visible than, than solar panels. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Uh to the board, anybody want to make a motion and then we can discuss it? You want me to do it? <laughs> um, so I would make a motion to approve it based on coming to a, a better uh, layout on the panels. Um, look, they're on a corner. There's no way around whether we're going to see it on one from one side to the other. Our standards do allow for them to be in, to be in the historic district. Um, I don't know if there was a way to get the panels to the back, like more towards the back side or the opposite side of the roof. I imagine it has to do with angles, but um, I would say I would agree with Carolyn's assessment that we could approve it based on an optimized layout. So. Okay. Uh, Was that <laughs> your whole I'm a, motion? I'm basically, I'm, I'm, I say approve it based on Caroline's suggestions. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Now it's discussion. <laughs> okay. Anybody coming up? Well, I mean, that's what it is. We just don't want to have, I mean, my neighbor has solar panels and it's not great to look at. You no. know, I'm not in a, I don't think I'm in a historical area, but I'd like to see something else right. where it just isn't so obvious. That house that you live in, I love that house. It's, right. it's really, I've been watching that house for years, you know, and I, I just hate to see these big clunky 
panels get on it and just my isn't, so okay. isn't there a method of doing insulation on the inside to help or Oh, that's okay. That, that's that's not that's not what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, that's you not can't what we're talking do it about. Never mind. We're not talking about Excuse that. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's okay. We you don't have to respond. Okay. Okay. <coughs> what I think is, you know, what this board needs to figure out is, you have to weigh which is, has more priority. Okay. Uh, the way I look at it, you know, position of a house. Age of house, uh, you know, if all the houses around it all come in and make a difference and put it into this weight. Okay, uh, this house is a premier signature house. I mean, when they talk about the historical district, you talk into the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. When they talk, when they anybody talks about the historical district, this is one of the houses they talk about. Right. You know. They talk about a couple of uh, Victorians, the Shaker, and this one. Okay. For a, a solar panel, you know, in this house, I would have to weigh on the uh, not using it. Okay, simply because it's too much of a, this house is signature for, uh, for Tarvin Springs. Mm -hmm. And the problem is everywhere you look at it, there's the roof, and the roof is a significant part of this house. Okay, it doesn't have just shingles. It's got a uh, uh, slate. It's not slate shingles, but it's this regular shingle made like slate to make it look that way. Okay, and that was done on purpose. It made it, you have to ingrate the, in that, all that would be negated with the uh, solar panel. And here, let me show you a picture of this. I'm just passing these two figures out I took. It shows the shingles themselves. Now these are regular asphalt shingles, but they're, they replicate slate, okay? Right. And that, that adds to the character of the house. Uh, so I, that's where I'm standing on this. On this, if we go with uh, approval with this step, you know, where you have to find, rather than having it approved by staff, it needs to come back to this board, okay? With because alternatives. If, if, there, if there's an alternative, mm -hmm. it has to come to this board, yeah. okay? But uh, right now, for the motion we have, I would have to vote against it. Me too. Okay. Oh, sure. Well, we're, hold it. After we're talking, then you can make a comment, okay? So you're not, yeah. you're voting against putting any solar panel up there, or what we're talking about now Well, is right now the motion is that Alternative. Not, we have to uh, the alternative. The alternative. So isn't the, that what we're approving? Is with the alternative. Not approve, we're not approving the uh, panels themselves. Right. The panels, as written, will be declined. Am I right? So your if motive. That's that. If that's that's what you. Uh, so would you suggested. be better off this continuing this to next month with having their contractor come back with the alt the uh, options? Well, let, let's see how we can get. How we do this here? Hang on a second. Okay, on hers. Didn't you have in here that, that not to use the uh, solar panels? Um, they, there, there's, you could make that a, a, a condition that 
Uh, well, it depends on, on, on what you determine. If, you, or if you're going to recommend denial, then they can come back with a, a new application. Oh, and that could be solar shingles, which... Okay, but if, if we deny this approval as is, is that the same thing as uh, that's the same thing as uh, uh so I think what you're trying to get to is perhaps um, to uh, well, this recommend either to continue uh, and and have them come back with a new application that's got an alternative. Okay. Or um, you're, you're either gonna. Okay. approve with the condition that they come back and show you a, a, a new alternative that is less visually impactful. The, okay, the motion is still on the table. Okay. Can, you, can, you, can we modify the motion, as you made the motion, to Start that one over. existing <laughs> design yeah. and to come back with a uh, <coughs> uh, another uh, alternative. Okay. okay. If, and then we would have to get another second. Hmm? We would have to okay. then get a okay. second. Let's uh, read. Let's let's read that. And make sure that's right. Okay. We're okay. going to. So right now we have it as. So an right approval. now it's, it's alternative panel configurations will be explored to reduce the visual impact. Is and then. And we're asking them to come back next month to get an approval on that. Okay. Or when they're ready. So when they're ready. ready, yeah. Okay, so essentially, I don't want this implied that the uh, existing design is not acceptable. Okay. Okay. You know, I can't hear you either. Okay. He said the existing design existing, is not acceptable. Existing design you're not, with the you're, not, you're talking that way and yeah. that, yeah. The existing des design would not be acceptable. So the new motion would be to deny the application with current configuration um, and request that they come back with a new design. Yeah, new configuration. Correct. Does Did I second that? So I'll second Does that, that sound? Yeah. So we're denying this right now. Yes. But we're saying come back and with something. With something that fits different. better with the stork. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because uh, we haven't voted. Mm -hmm. Huh? Are we to vote? Not yet. Well, when we're just writing it down for the record. Yeah, she's writing it down. Anybody else wants to say? I, I, I don't understand the whole concept. I do have solar panels on a cottage up on Cape Cod, but they don't work very well because too small, too little, you know, mm -hmm. not enough panels. And I'm thinking, you know, if it's at all possible to put them on the opposite side of the roof it's and have them it's really not. No. You can't do it at all. No, because it, the west side, right. when you're coming up uh, south, uh, uh, spring, oh, south Spring Street, it'd be, you can see it. It's you right can there. see it from the west side, too. Mm -hmm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think you could see them as much from that side. And it the sun back, goes, because yeah. my house is the same orientation. I'm a few doors down from them, so I know the sun goes from east, like from Banana, and it just goes right overhead. So I don't yeah. know why they couldn't look at how many panels could go on that side to whether it could be done or not. Okay. If your contractor was here, it would be a question we could definitely have asked yeah. them to help us tonight, but it doesn't. We don't have oh, that information. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, it's really that, yeah. Okay. Carolyn, can we, can we ask them to continue to next month so they don't have to do a second application? I think we can. Um, <laughs> I think, I, I'm actually not too sure about that. I think but you I need, to, I think for, for, for clarity of process, I think you need to either approve, approve with condition, or deny, and then they have remedies from all of those things. Okay, yeah, the only problem I have with the approve with this condition is it's very, you know, you don't address the existing 
design. No, it just it just says that they need that they, they need to check, go back to the drawing board and try and take another look at yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to make that more clear. That's the only thing. So I do think at this point, to clarify, I, I believe that you need to either approve, approve with conditions, or deny. Okay. And right now we have a motion and a second on the table to deny the application with the current configuration and return to the Heritage Preservation Board with an alternative configuration. Correct? Okay. Okay, yeah, we're... I think we can vote. We're not uh, adverse to, you know, solar panels or anything like that, but what, you know, they have to, they have to lend in with the historic, historical district, you know, because your house is right out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's, everything's exposed, and your roof is the majority of your house, you know, the way it's designed, you know, so. No, uh -oh. I think you no. can now. <laughs> I was just no. going to say, I think you can now. He can talk now, right? We, well, we have to do the still have to do it so it records, right? Okay, let's see. Okay, <laughs> then go on up and talk to us. Yeah. Um, we can do that. Eric's supposed to do it. The attorney's not here. Our attorneys. <laughs> well, yeah, we, can do, I, we don't have an attorney now, so I, we can do anyone. I wish your attorney were here because that's where I want to go is a little bit legal. And I, I didn't really want to do that. But Florida Statutes, Section 163.04, I'll read a, a little bit from that. I'm a retired CPA. I'm not a lawyer. We have not looked at legal remedies. We're not, we don't want to get into legal issues. Um, but uh, two short paragraphs from what I look, just Googled today. Florida law forbids ordinances, deed restrictions, covenants, or similar binding agreements from prohibiting solar equipment use. Under this law, a homeowner may not be denied by, quote, any entity granted the power or right in any deed restriction, covenant, or similar binding agreement to approve, forbid, control, or direct alteration of property, end quote. Um, I guess it was a comment of permission to install a solar collector, clothesline, which we're not doing that, or other energy device using renewable resources. Second paragraph, while a homeowner cannot be prevented from installing a solar energy system, certain restrictions may be imposed without violating the law. However, those restrictions must be reasonable, not arbitrary, and uniformly imposed on homeowners in a subdivision. This deals with both boards like you and homeowners associations. Exactly. The restrictions cannot act to, this is what we underline, the restrictions cannot act to impair the performance of a solar system or it may be seen as, quote, effectively, in quote, prohibiting solar. Okay, this is what we got. So step this, this board goes only with historical, okay? If it gets into that, lawyers can hash it out. But I, this is going to be our decision. Uh, can Steffi recognize Claire? Huh? Um, I just want to remind everybody that if you deny, the applicant has remedy to go uh, to appeal the denial to the Board of Commissioners. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. Is the Board Which of may be a better place for this to get right. hashed out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that should be your first shot. Right. Go to the Board of Commissioners. In fact, we have another one coming up. Next Tuesday, if Next it doesn't get on the yeah. calendar. Well, they can't get on the calendar. Okay. I think they can. They wouldn't be able to. This not that quick. It has to be advertised. On okay. Uh, thank you very much. Take a vote. Okay. Can we have a roll call vote? I don't think so. Now. Do you want her to read it one okay, more time? Okay. Let's read it one to vote yes. What will we be doing? You're going to deny the application with the current configuration and return to the Heritage Preservation Board with an alternative configuration. Okay. Okay. Ms. Denau? So I vote yes if I want it denied. Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sparker? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, you do have other right. options to go. Good.
Moving on, we're going to Cypress Street. This is uh, application 2333. Is it 467 Cypress, Cypress Street? Uh, staff? Okay, this is application 2333, uh, which is for 467 Cypress Street. Uh, this slide shows the location of the home. Uh, this slide shows the location of the home at the edge of the local historic district. Uh, the slide shows the um, subject property zoning and the surrounding zoning. Um, the applicant is seeking an after the fact certificate of approval to replace three exterior doors with uh, non-wood doors. Uh, the Florida master site file for the subject property notes that has been previously, that it has been previously altered. Um, the porch was enclosed, there was a rear addition constructed, the exterior was stuccoed. Um, but despite these alterations, uh, the structure retains enough historic integrity to be considered a contributing structure in the local historic district. Uh, so this is the 1919 uh, 19 Sanborn map. Um, blown up, you can see that originally uh, it had a, a, an open uh, wood porch. It was a wood frame home uh, in the front and along the side there. Um, this is showing the, the home in the 1926 Sanborn map. And this is the photo from the Florida Master Site file. You can see the porch was enclosed at some time, I'm guessing probably around mid-century because they have the awning style windows. Um, this is showing the doors on the subject property. This is the facade. Uh, you can see it's been altered. Uh, the windows have been removed and um, the screen door and screens have been added where the windows were at the time of the Florida Master Site file. And this is the east elevation and the west side. West side kind of gives you some context. What the street looks like. The neighboring property. So this is the proposed product that they have installed on the facade exterior door. Um, this is the uh, north elevation. No, this is south elevation. Right side, left side. Left side is the south elevation, so that was the north elevation, I was right. Um, so the standards, the Relevant standards of review are windows, doors, entries, neighborhood and district context, architectural features, adherence to secretary guidelines, and conformance with other city code requirements. Um, so we also have to look at adherence to the secretary's guidelines. So the application is inconsistent with the original architectural style of the home. Uh, simple wood doors would be the most sensitive replacement. Um, the, the property has had three exterior doors replaced with three different contemporary styles and materials. Um, and uh, the, the unpermitted construction has altered the aesthetics of the street. Um, when the porch was enclosed, that uh, front door was not as um, visible as it is today now that they've put in the screen door and the screens, so now you can see the door more. So in a way, <laughs> they've restored the facade to a more historically appropriate, but um, they've replaced the front door with a contemporary door made out of modern materials. So it's kind of a six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, so on the right of this slide, you can see um, what would be an appropriate <coughs> door for this um, subject property. Uh, and some of our guidelines from the design review guideline manual, so. 
Um, I will note that the doors that are installed, the doors in of themselves are not of substantially different visual quality. Uh, however, the window configurations on those doors are, are not consistent with the original style. Uh, so staff is recommending denial um, for the inconsistency with the standards of review. Uh, should the Heritage Preservation Board approve the application, staff would recommend that at a minimum the front door be replaced with an appropriate style door and that the certificate of approval would expire in three years if a building permit has not been issued. And with that, I can take any questions. Um, I'm submitting this as uh, my sworn testimony from the City of Tarpon Springs. What are the two other doors? So the two other doors, there's one on each side of the house. Towards the back? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, this is the west elevation. You, you can, the fence around it, you know, it's kind of hidden from the view, or at least obscured. And you can see it's there. And then on the east elevation, it, it's also kind of obscured. But you can see here what they looked like before they were replaced. Is, is that door being replaced? No, that no, is the door that has house. been replaced. Okay. So this is an, an after the fact mm -hmm. certificate. So as you can see from this picture, because of the screens, when you're looking right at it, you can see this very contemporary style door. Okay, thank you. The applicant, you okay? Hello and thank you guys. Um, I'd like to address the three doors um, that were just mentioned. I wanna point out that first of all, none of those doors are actually visible from oh. the street. Sir, uh, yes. would you please state your name and I'm address? I'm so sorry, yes. Roy Seipel, 467 Cypress Street, Tarpon Springs. Um, so that's, that's really number one. Um, number two, um, that door that you see behind the screen um, and the rest of the doors, I mean, none of the doors that were previous there were actually original. Um, they must have been changed, I can't even tell you how many times over the years. I mean, this is a house that's very, very old. Um, and the style of the doors is almost identical to the same style as everything else. This front door is actually almost identical to the neighbor at 471, right next door to the right. Um, and then the main, main thing that I'd like you guys to just keep in mind, this is a wood frame home. The old doors were all wood. Termites eat up everything. I mean, when we got there, those things were falling apart. I mean, they were like, you could do this and they would disintegrate in your hands. They're, ident they're, they're almost identical doors. It's just this is what's available in today's modern world, um, but they're not the quote unquote modern style doors. Um, they still have that, con you know, that old style look, but the main difference is they're metal. If you took this door between a metal and wood, which is really what this meeting is about apparently, um, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference if, other than just one being more solid and is not gonna deteriorate with time and will last longer. Any questions? I'd, I'd like the opportunity to rebut that. Sure. Uh, it is not so much about, it is about the material of the door. This, this is an historic home and the most appropriate replacement would be a simple wood door. Your next most appropriate replacement would be an alternative material, such as I stated these doors, you know, from the street. You can't tell if they're wood or not, that's fine. What you can tell is that's a very clearly contemporary design of window mm -hmm. on the door. So it's the glass in the door, and then, the, then on top of that, the three different styles. So there's a lack of consistency, and then the very contemporary nature of it. Um, again, if you can't see them, I, I'm not sure who they're hurting, but also if you look at the pictures that you yourself showed previous, they also had glass in them. This is just a different shape, slightly. But that's the door that's been replaced. Okay. So. But that wasn't an original what, what, door either. Okay, what doors are these, is he talking about? You have I a think picture of that? I think he's talking about these uh, doors here. Okay. So. Do you, you have a picture of glass? the doors before those? Yeah, and, and we honestly don't have any record of exactly what the original doors would look like. 
but what we do know is what would be appropriate, what an mm. appropriate replacement would be. So. Okay. It's the same door. Okay. So can we look at the picture of this one? And if you could go forward okay. to the current door, it's the okay. same. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Other comments? Seeing none. Uh, want anybody want to? Let's discuss it first. I, okay. Somebody needs to make a motion. Rather than making yeah. a motion. Right. I, I never did like that. Okay. I like it when she's not here. Right. Okay. An appropriate door. Um, we still need a motion and a second. Oh, really? In order yes. to discuss, yes. Before the discussion. Okay. Damn. So I got away with it. Okay. Who wants to make the motion? I don't like the door whistle. Well, you have to make the motion. But well, then we'll talk about okay. it and change it. Wait, I got to figure out what, what we're, okay. It's application 2333, 20, and he's replacing three doors with materials other than the original, and I deny that. I don't know what to say. So. Okay. So that's uh, I do uh, you, okay. You're you're saying not to okay not to approve it. Are you going to second it? No. I'm not either. Okay. If no well, one let's, seconds let's it, then it dies. Vote to approve and then go through More the steps confused. like we did yeah. before. Okay. You want me to do it? Yeah. You need um, a second. Okay. Need Nobody seconded. Second. Okay. So, so the that's motion dies. Die. And then is somebody else going to make a motion? I'll make a, a motion to approve. The three doors. As, well, yeah. And, uh, well, let's approve as stated, and then we go through each step. Were you well, it's not. Down? It's not as stated, though. It's because. Or I, I did add uh, if the board approved to con to condition it um, with the front door being replaced with an appropriate style door. Okay, so right. that's. We'll approve. We'll okay. make a motion my, for my, approval there with this and then we'll discuss line one because we've had oh my that's that's my motion to approve the three doors okay so if you don't want to approve it then oh okay okay, okay. you just want to approve three doors yeah and we okay. could discuss it after well we can discuss it now well not, not until, until we get a second second what am i seconding the, yeah, to, approve to approve the three, approve doors. three doors the three uh, doors be replaced right. or approving right. it i second okay it, okay can I say something as yep. to why? So look, wood doors in Carolina, I don't know if you're familiar with what's out there on, in the marketplace these days. Um, I can tell you Home Depot doesn't even carry a wood door in stock anymore. Um, they don't sell them in Florida. So if you want a wood door, you have to order one specific, which is obviously at a pretty penny, and they don't hold up. So that that's a tough thing. and to ask a homeowner to do these days is because they're not out there unless you buy a used one. Um, but knowing what the weather does to our doors here, mm -hmm. asking somebody to put a wood door on, I can't, yeah. I can't say that. But um, the, so the, there's definitely, like, she, Caroline has no issue with the, the two other doors. It's the front door. Um, she feels it's not, is it the glass that you don't like? Yes, I'd like to clarify. So I, I do have issue with all three doors, but most prominently that the, the door that's on the facade, the front door, it's not so much the material. I understand the, the realities of things, but it's not a plain, simple style, which is what our, our review design. guidelines tell us to do is if you don't know exactly what's supposed to be there, just go with a plain, simple style. Right. Would you approve that door if it had clear glass instead of, it's still the round oval without the decorative, would you approve it with clear? I mean, that's that's really, that is, um, mm -hmm. I, I think I would probably be more inclined to recommend uh, approval of that. It's just the, the decorative nature of it. It's not, it's clearly not a historic decorative door, Correct. right? So, okay. If I may. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just show you real quick. Yeah, sure. Please. I was, you can show the front door. This is the neighbor to my right. The exact yep. 
that's more in style. Uh, it's the same mm -hmm. concept. This is a square how it is oval. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's what we're yeah. talking about now, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really okay. an yeah. element Sir, would you Another please thing too. email me that picture that you just showed them so I could put it in the record? Thank you. Mm. You have my email address, correct? Okay. Uh, another thing, too, is, you know, this can be changed out fairly easily later on. If somebody wanted to go back to original, it's not like it's an original. You know, it's... It can be changed. Look with at an your door. door. Mm -hmm. Your door at your house. Yeah. Do you have little windows in it? No. No. Oh. Yes. I, I admit. Another thing. Off subject. Anyhow. Uh, so that that's, you know, I don't have a real. Yes, it is out of uh, character with the house kind of blends in with the area, you know, and uh, later on, it's easy to replace. If somebody comes in there and wants to bring it back to original, there's no problem. Right. It's not like you're changing a right. wall or cha destroying uh, some Just old stuff. It looks like it had a six panel wood door in that old picture. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just think that that house should have the simplest, stylish door, you know, they're not, all of them should be very simple, Yeah. stylish, <laughs> yep. They're very expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, discussion over? Mm-hmm. Okay, do we have a roll call vote? Now, Okay, so You're this is to approve, approve all, all the three doors. Mm -hmm. application as presented by the applicant. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sparker? Yes. Okay. Okay. You, you got it. Thank you. You've been patient, waiting patiently. <laughs> Okay, going on to our last one. What's Ring Street? Okay. That is, uh, where is it? Okay. Ring Street. 211 Ring Street, eat North Ring Street. It's about uh, doors and windows again. Uh, so this is application 2334 for um, 211 North Ring Street, which is just right down the road from us here, as you can see. Uh, this shows the subject property located just outside of the National Historic District, but within the local historic district. And it shows the zoning context of the area. So uh, the applicant is seeking a certificate of approval to replace three exterior doors and nine windows at the uh, subject circa 1955 contributing structure. This uh, frame vernacular structure incorporates uh, modernist and minimal traditional architectural features, um, such as uh, with the uh, frame, the asymmetrical facade and its rectilinear form, and the functional design with minimal ornamentation. Uh, here's the uh, subject property facade. Uh, Steph, uh, I do want to note um, that unpermitted alterations to the building facade and the north elevation of the contributing structure were discovered. Um, the uh, staff recommends that the applicant seek appropriate permits and certificate of approval after the fact for the alterations to the carport and new portico supports um, and the addition of an architecturally inconsistent window on the north elevation. So here you can see uh, the north elevation, and that's the new window I noted way there in the back there. And you can see uh, the columns. Those are not the original columns. From this picture, you can see the, the original simple wrought iron sports or aluminum sports. Um, so this is just showing the, the windows and doors that are the subject of this application. 
And here you can see uh, the unpermitted work. Here's a picture of it in 2011. You can see that window was not there. And uh, the support, the original support. This is just showing you some context. Uh, and these are the locations of where the applicant is seeking to replace the windows and the exterior doors. Um, this is the proposed products. And these are the relevant standards of review. Um, so um, for windows and doors, um, the proposed project does not meet this standard of review as it's not consistent with the original architectural style of the home. Simple wood doors that replicate the dimensions and design of the existing doors would be the most sensitive replacement for exterior doors at the subject property. Alternative materials that have the same visual qualities as the uh, existing doors would also be an acceptable alternative. Um, the subject structure has um, one, one, two over two, and two over three awning style aluminum windows. Awning windows are particularly suited for our local climate as they can provide ventilation even while it's raining. Uh, the use of awning windows was popularized in the earliest 20th century and is uh, associated with the modernist movement, which favored simplicity and functionality in design. And uh, the proposed project would alter these distinctive historic window types uh, inconsistent with the standard of review. With respect to neighborhood context, the alteration of the windows and door types would alter the aesthetics of uh, the historic streetscape. Uh, it's up to you to weigh the significance of those alterations. Um, with respect to distinctive architectural features, um, the design review guideline manual notes that windows are one of the most important elements of the building facade. And as stated previously, these awning type windows are distinctive and um, very, uh, they're a distinctive feature of the original contributing structures architecture. Um, the use of vinyl as a material in this case would be acceptable because it would replicate the look of the original uh, window material, um, but the dimension, style, and pane configurations should be preserved uh, in order to meet the standard of review. And again, simple wood doors, uh, similar to the original architectural style, would be the most appropriate, but the next most appropriate would be alternative materials, but again, a simplistic design. Um, with respect to adherence to the Secretary's guidelines, um, two and nine are particularly applicable, and the proposed project does not uh, fully meet the intent of the Secretary's standards, as the addition of contemporary style doors and windows would alter the historic character of the subject property. Here's just some pages from the design review guideline manual that I provided, noting uh, the importance of windows to the facade. And of course, we always want to retain and repair whenever possible, but when we replace, we want to make sensitive replacements. Um, and again, the same slide on simple doors consistent with the architectural style. So uh, staff is recommending denial of the application as presented. Uh, however, if the Heritage Preservation Board approves the proposed project, um, it's recommended that the approval be conditioned that the replacement door shall replicate the existing doors and dimensions and configuration of lights. Replacement windows shall preserve the awning configuration, number of panes, and existing dimensions and that the certificate of approval would expire in three years if a building permit has not been issued. Uh, and I'm entering that as my testimony for the city of Tarpon Springs. And I'll take any questions. Can, is there an example up there or in here of an awning window? What does that mean? So they were actually on the last structure. They open out, but you can keep them, because they open out and stay flat, you can keep them open when it's raining and water doesn't get into your house, mm -hmm. so oh. Oh. it's that's they're really associated with the uh, with the modernist like function a, over form. It's like a big jealousy window. 
No, those, they're not jalousies. They're not jalousies. No, they're not jalousies, right. but they come out like this. Okay, you crank them open, crank mm -hmm. them close. Oh, okay. Okay. So essentially, you have the whole area is open for airflow. Where a sash, you bring it up like this, this one, that cranks open like this. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what, what we're looking at is the small windows are two, two panes, correct? Right, and then. Okay, and the, the two large windows are three. Yeah, let's see how I can get them. Okay. Uh, I think that's the best shot of them. Okay. I know. See, are those the original windows? Yes, those are found to be original. Yes, this structure is uh, 1955. Oh, so they, both those panes fold out. Fold out. Oh. Yeah. These would be two, and this is three. All three of these would. Oh, okay. Come mm -hmm. out like this. Okay, uh, applicant. Oh, what to say? Good state, evening. Uh, state your name. Yes, my name is Ernest Patrick. And, and what uh, your address? My address is 211 North Ring. Uh, I live a block from here. Uh, I actually walked here this evening. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's nice. Good evening, Ms. Lanford. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I agree with somewhat of some of the things you said, other things I do not. Um, as mentioned, my name's Ernest Patrick and I've lived in Florida for five years. Um, I moved down here five years ago and I purchased a home. I actually have ties to the city of Tarpon Springs and as much my mother was born and raised in Tarpon Springs. And I as a child uh, spent many vacations, Easter's, Christmas, whenever my mother would come down to visit her family. Of course, we would be with her. And when I had an opportunity to retire, I needed a warm climate, and this is where I chose to spend the, the rest of my days. Um, I graduated from the university in 1974. And in preparing this presentation, I realized that next year is gonna be 50 years since I graduated from college. <laughs> I mean, I can't even wrap my head around that. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm 74 years old, I'll be 75 in August. But again, as I mentioned, I graduated in 1974 and I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in architecture. Um, my career for around 35 years in Michigan was as an architect and as a licensed residential builder in the state of Michigan. Um, although I, I don't consider myself to be an expert in anything, but I am a student of architectural history and the various residential um, uh, periods, the Victorian period that moved on to the arts and crafts period that moved on to the art deco period uh, that moved on to post-World post War II when <coughs> cookie cutter houses were built by the hundreds of thousands for returning veterans onto the what I would call the 1960s, the mid-century architecture, uh, onto the 70s and 80s when contemporary arch architecture made a little bit of a, a surge. Um, uh, art, arts and crafts designs, Cape Cod designs, story and a half bungalows. I'm familiar with all these various types of architecture, uh, the characteristics of these, of these buildings, the materials that were used. Um, so again, I'm not an expert, but I, I am very knowledgeable about uh, various architectural um, designs uh, through, the through the various periods. Um, at the onset, I'd like to say I, can, I appreciate the job that you, that you people do. I understand the importance of a historic board. The city I lived in in Michigan was, was incorporated in 1890, and it had many, many historic homes, and they all displayed a plaque showing the year they were built. Um, and I understand as an architect about preservation of our past and our various architectural styles. Um, up until 30 days ago, I did not realize my home was in a historic district. <laughs> it was only because of the permits that we filed to, to replace the doors and the windows that we became aware that we were asked to come before the historic board. So again, up till 30 days ago, I did not even realize I lived in a historic home in a, 
his historic district. Had I known that, I think I might have made some different decisions. At this time, I would like to offer a mea culpa. I did replace windows in my home without the necessary permits or coming before this board. My remedy to, uh, my solution to remedy that is I will this week apply for the permits and of course pay for the permits and any fee, any fines that are levied against me for my indiscretion. I would like to also offer me a culpa that I did replace two of the columns on my carport. Um, again, without consulting this board, but again, I, I, I wasn't aware that it was historic. I understand ignorance is not an excuse, but I certainly knew that I should have pulled a permit, having been a licensed builder for 35 years. Again, that was my indiscretion. Uh, I intend this week to um, apply for an application to appear before this board in the near future so we can discuss the columns, how we're gonna remedy that, and of course pay for any, any permits and any fines that are le levied, levied against me for my indiscretion in that matter. I would next, I would next like to um, discuss the neighborhood I live in. Again, I live here on Ring Street. It's a, North Ring is three blocks long from Tarpon Avenue down to Pine. And it's a very eclectic neighborhood. There are 15 single family homes in the neighborhood. There is one four unit quadplex. There are 12 attached condos. There are four commercial buildings. There is a, a development of apartments. Um, I believe they may be low income apartments. And there's one vacant building that I believe the owners have uh, applied um, to have it rezoned for a hotel. That was the last thing I heard about that particular property. So again, a very eclectic um, uh, a block uh, with various um, zonings in it. I'd like to address the 15 single family homes that are in that neighborhood. 11 of those 15 houses have single hung windows. That's 87%. A majority of the houses have single hung, hung windows. Two houses have awning windows. One house has a single hung window and an awning window. And one, one house has a horizontal slider and a, sing, and a single hung window. And again, this is what I could observe from the sidewalk. I didn't go onto the people's properties and, or walk into their backyards to see if all the windows were consistent throughout, throughout the home. This, again, was what I could observe from the, from the sidewalk. So um, again, somewhat eclectic, but again, preponderance of the windows are in fact single single hung windows, which is what I am requesting from this board this evening. Let's talk about the entry doors. Um, two, of, two, of the do two of the entry doors have no lights. Four of the doors have what I call a quarter light, where just the top 25% of the door has, has some sort of window in it. Seven of the doors have a half light, where half the door is, is glass, and three of the doors have full lights. The percentage of the doors that have lights is 88%. I would consider that a preponderance of doors that uh, the entry doors have lights. And what I am requesting tonight is to replace the three existing doors in my home. Um, we'll, okay, we'll get to that in a, in a second. All right, let's now talk about the integrity of the windows in my home or really the non-integrity of the windows in my home. As mentioned, my home was built in 1959. It's 64 years old, and the windows are original to the house. They are, in fact, awning windows. They are aluminum. The aluminum through the years is very pitted. Uh, the glazing is single glaze. There's only one pane of glass. Um, the mechanism on these windows do not work well. They work to a, to an, a certain extent. Um, the weather stripping is some sort of rubber that has hardened through the years, um, has deteriorated. Um, seven of the nine windows that I am asking to be replaced, I actually have screwed shut because they will not close via the, the mechanism. It, 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 
they are just so old and it is so deteriorated. Uh, so again, I've actually had to um, screw shut seven of the nine windows because otherwise my conditioned air would just leak out and that would just create other issues. The windows are in dire need of needing replacement and I'm sure the board would agree with me there. I think the only conflict we may have this evening or is possibly the type of window that I want to replace them with. And again, I am proposing to replace these with what are referred to as single hung windows. I'd like to refer you at this point to the uh, pamphlet, uh, the uh, pictures that I, I, I submitted to you. And let's start with the first picture, which is photo A, which is the front elevation of my home. If everyone has that. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side is the carport. And you can see in the carport that there is a window there. And there's also a door. That door enters into my laundry room where my washer and dryer are, and is also the mechanical room where my hot water system and my electrical panel is. That door currently is a wood door original to the, height, to the house and has a half light in it. In other words, half the door had a glass window. It's currently some plexiglass or something that someone put in somewhere down the line. To the left of that, that door is the main door which is a solid slab, it's a wood door, again, original to the house. It is delaminating, needs to be replaced. I'd like to address the doors since we, we're, we're, we're at that point. I am proposing to replace both of these doors. Both of these doors will be identical. Because they, you can see both of these doors as you front, stand in front of the house, I feel aesthetically it would be more pleasing if both of these doors were the same. And what I am proposing for my doors, for these two doors, is that they be a two-panel door with a quarter light. Okay. Um, the only difference between these doors would be the, the main entry is what we call a 3-0 door, and the door entering into the laundry room is a 2-6 door. Otherwise, again, they will both be exactly the same. <clears throat> to the left of the main door is the living room. And you can see there that there are awning windows. And they're stacked three, 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 three on top of one another. OK, and there are two windows there. Each window is 36 inches wide. And there are two windows that are as we call mulled together. There's a bar in, in between the two windows is referred to as a mullion bar. To the left of those windows is a bedroom. So the two windows you see on the left, that is a bedroom. And there are two windows that are mulled together there. And again, they are a one over one window. It is an awning window. Now here's what I would like to point out. If you look at the window on the right, which is in the laundry room, that is one of the windows I replaced. That is a vinyl window. It's a single hung window. Compare that window to the windows on the left. If you look at the proportion of the window on the right with the windows on the left, you will see the, you, you cannot discern from this picture that those are two different windows. That one is a, a, a single hung window and the other is an awning window. You cannot discern that from this photograph. The proportions of the windows are the same. There is a horizontal bar separating the two sections of the window. So what I would contend is to replace the awning windows with single hung windows would not change the characteristics or the character of the facade of that home. Again, had I not mentioned to you that these were two different windows, you would say those windows are exactly the, the same. They're the same width. The proportion of the glass is the same. So again, by, by, by changing the windows, going from awning windows to single hung windows would not alter the character of my home or the aesthetics of the elevation. If you go to the next three pages, are homes 
the first picture uh, labeled green. This is a picture of one of the condos that's down the street from me, approximately 100 yards from my home. That, that those condominiums, there are 12 of them, were finished within the last year. They were completed and sold, or they, they completed them, began selling them about a year ago. And that project was specified with single hung windows, of which I submitted a picture. The next picture I've submitted is a home on Safford. It's essentially right, Safford is the next street over from where I live, and that house is almost, is, is behind me. The reason I show you this picture is this home was completed about a year ago. It's in the historic, this same historic district that I am in. And that window was, also has single hung windows, and the doors in this particular home essentially are exactly the type of doors that I want to replace with my house. They are a two panel door with a quarter light at the top. Again, this project was completed uh, within the last year. The third photograph that I've submitted to you is a house on Orange Street. The, this house, uh, where there were actually two houses uh, side by side that were uh, developed by the same builder simultaneously. And once again, you can see from this photograph that it has single hung, win single hung windows. And again, the type of door that I would like to place in my home, a uh, two panel door with a quarter light at the top. Why do I, sh why do I submit these photos to you? I submit these photos to you because these are homes that are in the same district as where I live. And this board, I, because they're in a historic district, I'm assuming they came before this board and this board approved single home windows for a home in this, in this district. It also approved the type of doors that I am asking to put into my home. I would like to mention, uh, also I forgot to mention, that the doors I am proposing to put in my house will be fiberglass, not wood. The next photograph, which I've labeled both doors, now if I sit in the recliner in my, my living room and I look out the window, this is the vista. This house is directly across the street from me. And this window, this, this, this house is a fourplex. There are four apartments in this home. And the first floor has two apartments and you can see the two entry doors to that apartment. And the irony of this is these are exactly the type of doors I want to put in my house other than the fact that this, this, uh, the, the door on the right is, for, is a steel door from Home Depot. I am proposing to have fiberglass doors um, for my home. But again, it's a two panel door that has a quarter light at the top. And the door on the left is a half light door, which is the type of door that I am proposing to put in the back of my house. The back of my house has an addition that was put on circa 1965. And um, that door is currently a steel door, which would have been a material that would have been used in 1964. Five, it has elements of rust, and I am asking to replace that door with a door uh, in, in kind. And the last photo is uh, that I've labeled both windows. This house is across the street from me and right next door to the house I just showed you. So it's actually kitty corner from where I live. And the reason I've presented this photo to you is this house um, exemplifies a house that has awning windows in the bottom and single hung windows in the top. Okay, so this house exemplifies all these houses exemplify what I am asking to, to be allowed to put in my home. I would, I would, I would argue, not in an argumentative way, but in a legal sense, I would, I would contend that the single hung window is ubiquitous. It, single hung windows have been installed in residential homes since the late 1800s, all through today. I would imagine that 99.9% .9 of the homes that are built in America spec them as either single hung, single hung or double hung windows. They are ubiquitous, they are, they are, they are timeless. And many, in homes that were built in this period, my house could have been single hung windows, but for the fact 
that the architect specified an awning window. And as Ms. Lanford said, the purpose of Lanford, of, I have to slow down, the purpose of awning windows, as Ms. Lanford said, is to allow windows to be open while, it, while it's raining and for water not to come into your home. But you have, to, you have to keep something in mind. When my house was built in 1959, it, central air wasn't something that was available to the common person. The common person had no choice but to leave his windows open. So the awning window was more because of its functionality, not because it was a minimalist or, 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 or could be attributed to a certain architectural style. It was strictly about function. It was, it's hot down here, it's rainy, you don't want to close your windows. I would contend that the awning window is a window that's outlived its, its, its time. Today, if it's raining, we close our windows and we turn on the air conditioning. Is there a house down here today that isn't built with central air? Times have changed. Technology has changed. I found it interesting with the first couple this evening who had a house built in 1920, 100 years ago, and they want to put solar panels on. Times have changed. Technology has changed. And I appreciate the fine line that you walk between preserving our historic neighborhoods and making room for modern technology. Again, no air conditioning in 1960, 1959, but today air conditioning central air is ubiquitous. We all have it. If it rains, we close our windows, we turn on the air conditioning. Thank you very much. This, uh -oh. Hold on one. Are you done? Oh, no. Oh, no? <laughs> but, al but almost done. Oh, okay. Keep on going. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought you were. Um, <laughs> so again, I would contend that, that the, request, the request I'm making, uh, and it's primarily about the windows, is very reasonable. Times have changed. 1959, you would have been hard pressed to find a microwave in a kitchen. Today, they're ubiquitous. Every kitchen has a microwave. Uh, same with a dishwasher. Who could afford a dishwasher in 1959? Only the most affluent. But today, they're virtually ubiquitous in any kitchen. Times change, technology change, the way we live changes. Again, I, I, I propose that the awning window has outlived its usefulness. Today, the double hung window, the single hung window is ubiquitous. It has been ubiquitous for 150 years. The last photo I, I submitted to you, I call clips. When I purchased my home, it was in disrepair. The roof, the people who owned, the man who owned it was elderly. He was, maybe for lack of a better word, indigent. He couldn't afford to maintain his house. The roof was terrible. And because the roof leaked, all the, not all the soffits, but a lot of the soffits were damaged from water sitting in there and rotting away the wood. Some of the soffits were made of vinyl. They had deteriorated, they had cracked, they had discolored and they had to be replaced. A conscientious decision I made when I bought this house was as long as I have the soffits off and the structure, the, the rafters and the structure is exposed, I chose to put hurricane, hurricane clips in. It was more money, it wasn't mandated that I do it, but my, my first concern has always been and still is to this day is safety. I'm from up north. I don't know what a hurricane is. I've never lived through a hurricane, but I tell you, I am terrified of them. And I think we are all very fortunate that we dodged one last year. One was on a trajectory to come right at us. I mean, we were fortunate not to get hit. Unfortunately, our neighbors to the south did get hit. But believe me, I, I, I went through a great deal of angst, saying, should I leave, should I stay, what am I gonna do? I know my house is vulnerable. I don't have impact windows. Although I should note that as I replaced windows in my home, I did install impact windows. Concern of, of, my, of hurricanes has been my concern for five years since I, since I bought this house. We're in the final stages now of completing that task and making my house 
as cost-effective hurricane-proof as I can make it. I have family that comes and visit me. I have grandchildren. I want to know that if they're ever down here during hurricane season, my house is as safe as I can make it, again, cost-effectively. So again, uh, my intention is not to try and save money here. My, my primary intention here is safety. Again, I installed hurricane clips throughout the house uh, at an added expense that I didn't have to incur. The windows I am proposing to put in are triple glazed impact windows manufactured by, according to my research, probably the number one window manufacturer in Florida, PGT. If I wanted to cut corners, I could just go to Home Depot, get a, a window and install it, be done with it. But I am having these windows custom glazed, custom made, they're gonna be triple glazed, and again, installed by a professional uh, window company. So again, I'm trying, I am not trying to save money. I am trying to make my house as safe as I can possibly be. In conclusion, I would like to state that hurricane season is almost upon us. Next month it begins. I, up until a month ago, I, I felt very comfortable knowing, well, this year hurricane season, which will be my fifth, I will be, I will be as safe as I can possibly make my home. It is still my objective. The lead time to get the windows and the doors that I am proposing is about two months. So if I were allowed, if I were granted a permit, I would still be two months away from receiving the windows and then of course we would have to schedule the insta installation. Uh, I think that's all I have and I will entertain your questions at this point. We'll go with the questions and then, do you have anything to say? Uh, Any to your questions first. Okay. Quick question. Yes. Just to change the, those columns. Yes. Did they, were you, they completely replaced or did you just sheathe the? No, um, let me tell you about the columns. There were three structural columns there. Miss um, mm -hmm. Lanford referred to them as uh, wrought iron. They were actually, I believe, steel. I replaced two of the columns because they, they were completely rusted out at the bottom. Okay. I was really amazed that, those, that that carport didn't come down. There wasn't much holding it. So what I did was I removed those columns, I installed a galvanized plate, I epoxied it into the driveway, and I installed a six by six womanized post. Anchored it to the structure above, and of course it was anchored to the structure below. I then, ra I, I then boxed out the lower half of that with womanized wood, and then I skinned it, sheathed it with hardy plank. And then I, now I, I'm in the process of applying stone. The project's not finished yet. I've been working on it for a year and a half. It's very tedious. I am hand setting every one of those stones. And then the top is wrapped in, again, hardy, hardy board and hardy trim. So yeah, don't, don't, no, the, the old ones are out and the, and the new stuff is in. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and if I might add one more thing, my favorite architectural period is the arts and crafts period. I just, I just really like that period. I like the simplicity of it. I like the fact that the arts and crafts period emphasize a natural stone, natural wood, mm -hmm. earth tone colors in, in the paint schemes. And whenever I do a house for myself, I always try and add arts and crafts elements. And these columns are to represent that. They, uh, I, I kind of figured that one. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> so what do you call the architectural style of your house now? I personally feel that my house has no architectural style at all. It's, it's definitely fighting with itself because you've got about three going on. Because <laughs> so, you've got, like you said, it, when I saw the columns, I'm like, well, we're either going arts and crafts or we've got these old, you know, uh, these big 
cinder blocks. Yes, yeah, well, that's that not that's, 1970s. That's well, those, those, those were there, ma'am. I haven't decided. No, I'm just talking about it overall. It gives you a style of your home, and you know, and then you got the the awning windows. So all all this stuff is kind of fighting with each other, and I'm trying to figure out where you're going to come out at and what what the house is going to be. Well, again, my my proposal is to replace the awning windows with single hung windows. I which get that, believe me, I I know windows backwards and forwards. <laughs> so I, I'm just trying to, if we approve those single hung windows um, by PGT, I just want to to make sure that because this is considered a frame vernacular house. I just kind of want to figure out how we're going to end up looking when we're done here. Is this frame vernacular? That's what it shows in the file. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I don't even know what that means. Okay, that's, <laughs> I've never uh, heard that term before, frame vernacular. Uh, uh, cinder block house? No, it's not. It's, it's wood framed. Oh, it is wood framed. That. Yeah, that's why I was like. Yeah, uh, wow. I know a lot. Again, it's, it's not arts and crafts. It's not Victorian. It's not Cape Cod. It's, if nothing, it's just a, a ranch house. The vernacular. The frame vernacular can be almost anything, anything. so. The yeah. vernacular usually, uh, I'm sorry, are you ready for my comment? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, vernacular refers to the fact that it's not uh, architect designed. Mm -hmm. So it it's, um, you know, taking from uh, other, other structures in the area. It's a vernacular structure. Um, okay, so. It's just are, okay, go ahead. Are, are you done with your comments and questions? Well, yeah, for the most part. Again, I feel what I am requesting here this evening is very reasonable. I am in conforming with what's going on in the neighborhood. Again, 87% 80, of the houses have single hung or double hung windows. 88% um, 80, of the entry doors have glass in them. Um, so again, I feel what I am asking is, is reasonable. And again, a, a single hung how a single hung window would have been found in the 1959 houses that were built. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm finished. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I have a, you have any? I have a couple of points okay. here. Couple um, so it's not really the, this board purview to determine if something is reasonable unless it's, it's structurally or physically infeasible. Um, you're, you're here to perform the function of, uh, as, as defined in the code, for heritage preservation. And that's not just for grand structures that are Queen Anne's or Victorian's or Craftsman's. These are for simple vernacular homes as well, because history belongs to everybody. The, 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 the less fortunate folks who have small homes, um, they have a part of the story to tell too, right? So just for clarity, we don't just regulate the grand homes that we think are pretty that are in special places. We are, we are here to use our guidelines and apply them to each and every home uh, or building that they, uh, that they refer to. Now, the applicant noted that he thought it would be more aesthetically pleasing if the two front doors were um, the same. I would argue that the architectural style of the house is just that vernacular and asymmetry is certainly one of the uh, distinctive architectural styles that you see here. Um, so it's, it's again, we're not, we're, we don't regulate what we find aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. we, we regulate what is consistent with the historic architectural style. We, we have you know, the originals here, so we know exactly what the original architectural style was. So I'd like to just remind you of the Secretary of Interior standard number six that deteriorated historic features may be re shall be repaired rather than replaced where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature. The new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary physical or pictorial evidence. So we know exactly what the original features of this house look like because they're still there. So what the Secretary of Interior is saying is that if they are so deteriorated that they need to be replaced, they need to be replaced with something that looks as closely as possible to what we have. Um, with respect to the double hung, I mean the single hung windows, if they're in the same pane configurations, I believe they would visually uh, replicate the original qualities. However, what you're not going to get is that three over three window. Understood. 
So that one is not is, is going to change. Um, so I thought it was also interesting that we discussed how central air, you know, wasn't a thing. Well, that's exactly why where the, these windows came from, right? It wasn't it, that is in, inherently a historic feature of this house. Um, <clears throat> So because the, the architectural style is putting function over form. Um, with respect to the, the other homes and buildings in his vicinity, this is a very eclectic district. We have all, and he's in a very eclectic part of a very eclectic <laughs> district. Um, the Ring Street homes and the new home on Safford, they did have to come uh, they were. They have to uh, to comply with the, the design guidelines, just like existing historic homes do. They're different because they're for new structures, but they also have to comply with these guidelines. Um, and I, that's pretty much it. I, I I I'm very sympathetic to the fact that um, that these windows are aluminum. They're old. For practical reasons, they need to be replaced, probably. But what I'm saying is that we need to replace them with something that looks as close to what we have now as possible. And that's, that's not me saying that, that's your guideline saying that. Hey, Caroline, what do you, because the, I happen to love the awning, and on PGT makes a beautiful one, by the way, but it's gonna make this house look super modern. I think, yeah, that's right. I think if you, you could keep the pane configurations, and it, it's still it's calling back to that original architectural style. Okay. I, I, I'd like to address one issue that's been brought up. I don't know if any of you have ever lifted a triple glaze insulated window. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. Now, the center windows, which are three one over three over three or however you, re, you refer to them i cannot imagine how heavy that window will be because i am specking triple glazed windows what kind of mechanism is going to be in that window that i will be able to crank to open that window that's going to be one heck of a super heavy mechanism okay, you know you're talking you're, ta you're talking about the uh the mechanics the, me the mechanics the, for a uh louvered window for the awning window. The awning window. Again, that, that's, if, if that window were a triple glazed window, Understood. those panes would be very, very heavy. There's a reason they were made out of aluminum. <laughs> yes, there is a reason. There, there really was. That's, that's, yeah, yes, that's of right course. There. Yep. Okay. Uh, no public? You want to make a motion? And then uh, we can discuss it after that. Um, I think I'm still a little hazy on the spec of the doors that that was that we're um, considering. Um, are they not the the one light that's in the packet? Um, I know that all I had in the packet was the one light. Um, but if no, no. And again, I, I one of the pictures I submitted to you. In fact, four of the pic three of the pictures I submitted to you showed you exactly the type of door. I you want that cottage style with just the the glass at the top yes a simple no, no, two panel shaker type door what we would refer to maybe as a shaker door because it has the flat panel a two panel door with a quarter light at the top um again i i showed you the house across the street from me that has one that's actually made of steel uh and again a couple the house on safford and the house on orange street were exact replicas of what i'm asking for if it is a big deal, I, I would compromise. I could go back to a solid slab on the front door. I, I sort of disagree with Ms. Lanford about the fact that those two doors shouldn't match. As an architect, I see the aesthetic value of having both of the do doors that are visible to match. Um, so I think that's a point of dis that Mrs. Lanford and I would not agree on. Well, the only thing when you do that, then you make, then you kind of, Get a head scratcher is which door do you go to if they both look the same? 
I also have a degree in architecture, so I, 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 that was just my oh, good. <laughs> that, um, that was just my my thought is. Uh, I, I don't think so. I think people can easily identify the front door as the front door. First of all, it's a three-o door as opposed to a two-six door. A two-six door is much smaller. Uh, I think it, the front door could easily be identified. But again, if if, if it's a so point it, of it doesn't like it, as long as the style of door is acceptable for the period, I would. I mean, who am I to say what, what goes where? But I just, we didn't have a spec sheet on it, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Vernacular. Yeah. That, it's not really a, a hard and fast one. Okay. Uh, are we ready? Um, Any questions? No questions. I guess so. on, on, on the three, the, the large, living room window is it is there a window made with the three panels like it, there is but it, it the frame of it is much wider than what they made back then so it will it, it will have a very distinctive look and very to me it's kind of more of a mid-century kind of look i don't it, it's just it will be modern um, it's very. Oh, it would be. It, it'd be stationary where it doesn't open. No, they open. Oh, they do open. Yeah, they open, but they, but it will. It, it will look, look similar, like but they're just going to be. Diff, it's going to be different. It'll give you the three. Yeah. And then you could do all of the other ones as single hungs. Right. But the one center well, one. Then you know, the living room. You know. You yeah. Have a, Essentially, single homes, two panels. It would be having, only having two, two, two larger ones, kind of match a little bit better. An Oreo window too would work, to where you could do you got the smaller pane, and then you could do just a one bar. That would give you the the, the simulation of three, but I don't know if that will go will work for a code for exit. I have no idea, so I'd hate to. Us to say that. Yeah, yeah, just chime in on that one. Never easy. Well, you know, there's a reason why there's no, no Louvre windows anymore. Okay, I'll make a motion so we can discuss it real quick. Okay, then. good, good. Okay, so I motion that we allow for the single hung windows and all the ones that would simulate the same look with the exception of the living room one, if we can, we can request that to be an awning to keep with the character of the home. Or make it a three panel, not an awning, just a regular straight window. Well, if you do that, you'd have to do an oriel. What? So that means you've got a smaller pane at the bottom and you have a larger pane at the top. And then he could put a bar in, in the bar. middle. But, and that gives him a single hung, but it just, it's oh. kind of a weird look. That's a weird look, yeah. Yeah. Um, as we for the, the doors, I, I have no, I have can no we, issue. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Can we just get a, a motion? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was trying, I was trying. <laughs> okay. All right, so I motion that we allow the single hung windows, um, with the exception of the living room window to be awning, and then the doors, um, a uh, fine with fiberglass. Um, I think that you would have to keep it, if, if we're doing a, a quarter light, it would have to be a clear glass quarter light to, to go with the style of the house. Okay. That would be my motion. Got a second? I'll second that. Second, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm now you. I'm sorry, who seconded? Okay. Okay. And, and just for clarification, ma'am, could you please tell me what you're proposing for these center windows? Um, you, so all of your windows can be single hung with the living room if we could look at the awning window so that we keep with the character of the home. And look, the new awning windows are very well made. The mechanisms, they should absolutely keep up. And if they don't, you could always come back for, you know, to get that one window approved. Hurricane season's upon us. I very much would like to get this matter resolved this evening so I can order the windows and uh, again, hopefully have them in before we're too deep into the hurricane season. But I just think that that kind of keeps with the character of the home. Your your home was actually built with an awning window and it's, you, 
it's because this, it's not that the neighborhood has them, it's because your house is a particular style and that's what it was born with is the reason we're, we're at, you know, passionate about maintaining the style of it. But I think that, you know, it's still a win. You get the single hung with the exception of your main window, which will give you some character to the house because you're, because you've got those, those modern stack stones. I really think that the awning will look good with that. If you want that style, you like that style, I think you're going to get some of that look to it. So, that, well, that, 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 so that's my motion, sorry. Well, that's the only objection. We have everything else you can do. Okay, do we have a second? Sure. Yeah, with that? I need a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, the only thing I have with awning windows is there's a reason why they're not here anymore. Exactly. It, was, it wasn't designed. It wasn't designed. It was designed for free flow of air. Mm -hmm. It wasn't designed for air conditioning. They're back. Huh? Awning windows are, are very much a trend, so. You're kidding me. No. They're, very, they're modern. They're, the, they're a beautiful modern window now these days. Anderson makes them. Pella makes them. PGT makes them. Oh, okay. They, they all make them, but how many are actually specced in new construction? I think it all depends on the style of the home. A lot of modern homes have them. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we want to touch base with the uh, columns? Talk about those. I think if he does that, it all blends together a little better. Okay. So right then, now, it, that house. Then, uh, you think the columns will be good the way they are? With with those type windows, I think they'll they'll okay. blend better. But that's not what's before us, is it? No. 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 Columns are not oh, before us. Aren't, aren't before us. No. No. I, I, as I said in my opening statement, I am prepared to uh, submit an application to appear before this board within the next couple of months to address the columns and, mm. you know, how we're going to remedy that and, okay. uh, again, pay for permits and any fines that may be levied against me. Okay, that sounds good to me. You can have this back then if you want to. Anybody have any more questions or discussions? No. no. Okay, ready for a roll call vote? No. So let's let's make sure what we're doing. The um, motion that I have on the table is to allow single hung windows with the exception of the living room window, which must be an awning window. For the doors, allow that they have a quarter light style. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, Ms. Denoff? Fi yeah. And fiberglass. Fiberglass. Oh. I added um, quarter light style with fiberglass material. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, that sounds good. Roll call. Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sprecker? Yes. Most of the way. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, Sorry. Fun, huh? uh, can I ask you a question? Since we're, we're done, with it, are you going to oh, paint the house oh. at all? Yeah, are you painting it? Or is it this, uh, it's a pretty color, I love the color. I was just wondering since you're doing that stack stone. I, it has uh, nothing to do with the board, I'm just asking as a. The house was painted uh, four years ago. It was painted the color before that color right there. I just knew you said you liked the arts and crafts color, so I just I was wondering if you were gonna do that. I chose that green because it's kind of beachy, and kind of floating. No, it's beautiful, I love it. I was oh, just wondering. Oh, I love it, it looks great. I'm not crazy bad. about the red door, but I like the, you know, <laughs> but okay. I like the red. Let's call it crimson then. Right, okay. That's all right. Okay. My son-in-law okay. went pee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, staff, we got any comments? No, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Lamford. Oh, thank you. Board, any comments? Okay, it is 8.32. I'm calling this one adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. That was a good, good compromise. Uh, I I love awning windows. You know, Phil does too. It's just I'd like that. Well, he's he's got an opportunity to go two different ways with that house because he yeah. like it, it could totally be modern and cool, or it can yeah. very oh. modern looking. Yeah. Oh. Because it's yeah. that that's the oh. 
Yeah, right. I hope he uh, got his his wind mitigation redone when he did those clips. No, you know. have. Yeah. Oh, Good night, everyone. Oh. Another meeting. Because right. I had that done on my house. What's that? Meeting. Those hurricane clips. It, it, it dropped my, it dropped my insurance down significantly to add those. Really? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carol. It totally changes your wind mitigation. Ooh, I have to check on that. You know what it cost me to do that?